So far, all the data that our programs have used has been hard-coded. The data has actually been written into the programs. Normally, you would want the user to enter some data for the program to work with. So let's see how that's done. First of all, I've declared a couple of string variables into which I want to capture the user's first name and the user's last name. The simplest way to get the user to enter this data is to use the input box function. Let's see how that's done. I copy this variable and I'm going to assign a value to it using the input box function. Enter your first name. It doesn't actually matter if I spell that wrong, but let's be tidy. So if I run this, my program will prompt the user to enter their first name. When they type in their name, it will be assigned to the variable stFirstName. Let's ask the user to enter their last name as well. So stLastName equals, and again, I'm using the input box function. You'll notice as I'm typing, I've got some help appearing on the screen, another reason why this is called Visual Basic. I'll explain more about that a little bit later. For now, let's just keep it simple. When I run this program, it will successively ask me to enter my first name and then my last name. So those two variables have now been initialized. Let's output their contents. Run the program, type in my first name, type in my last name, and then the two message box statements are outputting those values successively. Let's say a little bit about the help that was appearing while I was typing the input box function. I'm going to do that again. stFirstName equals input box, open a bracket, and I can see a number of things here. These are called parameters. The parameters which are in square brackets are optional. I don't have to supply them. But I can see here that the prompt parameter, which is currently highlighted in bold, is not optional. I have to at least put in a prompt parameter. So here's my prompt to the user. When I type a comma, I can see that title is now highlighted in bold. If I wish, I can supply a title. Maybe something like that. You can see again I'm supplying a string. If I type a comma, I can put in a default value. Again, a string. There are some other parameters there. X position, Y position. They control where the input box appears on the screen. I can even associate a help file with it, but I'm not going to go into those. Let's see what we've got now. When I run the program, you can see my title appearing on the top of the input box, you can see the prompt, and you can see the default value as well, which is highlighted, so as soon as the user starts typing, that's overwritten. Let's see another program which prompts the user for input. This time I'm going to write a program which calculates the area of a triangle given its base and its height. But I'm going to ask the user to enter the base and the height. I've declared three variables, dbl base, dbl height, and dbl area. dbl area will hold the result of my calculation which will then be displayed to the user. So let's prompt the user for a base and a height. DBL base equals, and again, I'm using input box. There's my prompt string. DBL height equals input box.
and there's my prompt string. Once I've captured those values off the user, I'll perform the calculation. So dbl area equals half base times height. dbl base divided by 2 times the height. I can see I've made a spelling mistake there. And then finally, we'll output the area of that triangle. Let's give it a whirl. Enter the base, let's go for 16. Enter the height, 17. And that triangle has an area of 136. Let's just check it works with real numbers. I'll run it again. This time I'll enter a base of 17 and a height of 19. And that triangle has an area of 161.5. So to summarize, we can make our programs much more flexible by asking the user to input data that the program can work with.